Is this the hardest GCSE question ever asked? Vectors, algebra, ratios. Now let me know if you've been doing your mocks, you've probably seen this question before. Let me show you guys the best way, or in my opinion, the best way to tackle it. So we have OAB is a triangle. We have OPM, APM are straight lines. M is the midpoint of AB. So let's just add these ticks here. Uh, we have O to A is the vector A and O to B is the vector B. The ratio of OP, PM is three to two. So this here is three to two. Work out the ratio O, N, N, B. Okay, so work out how much N uh, splits up this line, okay? Now, one thing about this is um, we know the vector OB, but we don't know how this is partitioned. So I'm going to put B here, just so I don't mess up the diagram. Now, remember, if this ratio here changed, yeah, this intersection here, then that will determine where N goes, because obviously you can rotate that. They've said, let's fix it so that it's 3 to 2, all right? If that was 1, 1, then N would be in a different position, okay? So, how do we find the ratio that N breaks up this line? Well, what we could do is we could give O N a definition. We could give it a, a, um, a vector. But, really, we need to find a vector that takes us from O to N indirectly, okay? So I think it's a good idea to define it and figure out what its form must look like. Now, if O to N is on the line O to B, then it must be a multiple of O to B because on the same straight line means that they are multiples or parallel vectors, okay? Now think about it. This here, will it be smaller than B or will it be bigger than B? or smaller, because this is O to B, which is B, so this vector here would be smaller. It's a fraction of B. But we don't know what that fraction is, that's what we're trying to find out. So let's call it K. This is KB, okay? So we're gonna let O to N equal some fraction of B. So K is between zero and one, okay? Because when I say fraction, you can have fractions bigger than one, and that's not what we're talking about. Now that's obviously not helpful because we don't know what k is. So somehow we're going to, have to utilize these other numbers to go from o to n. All right. Now all of my GCSE students know exactly how I go from point to point. I like to go up and then I like to come down. All right. So this vector here is a. So to go from o to n, what do I need to do? To go from o to n, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from O to A, and then I'm going to go A, N, N. Okay, now O to A is A, but the problem is, is how do I work out N? That's the toughest part of the problem. Well, they did say in the question that A, P, N is a straight line, meaning if I work out A to P, and then extend that, make it longer, it will take me to N. But we do not know what that extension is, okay? So imagine we have A to P, do we double it? Yeah, do we double this vector to get A N? Is it 1.5 times bigger? So if we take this, if we times it by 1.5, would it take us to N? We don't know. And here again, we have to give it an unknown multiple. An unknown multiplier. I'm going to call it x. So, a n is x times bigger than a p. So it's an extension. So I'm going to take a p. I'm going to extend it by a factor of x, and that will take me to a n. Okay. So it's my job now to work out what a to p is. All right. How do I go from a to p? Well, we need to lay out that pathway. A to P, yeah, to go from A to P, I'm going to go back to O, I'm going to go up. So I'm going to go A, O, and then up. 
Well, AO is going against the arrow, so we're going minus A. Now, OP, OP is three parts out of five, three parts out of five of OM. So now we have to work out OM. How do I go from O to M? Well, to go from O to M, I need to go O, A, and then half of A, B, okay? Because M is in the middle. So I'm going to go O, A, plus half of A, B. So we're doing three-fifths of O, A, plus half of A, B, okay? So you have minus A, plus three-fifths of O to A is A, plus a half of A to B. Now, how do I go from A to B? I go minus A plus B, or B minus A, okay? So we're doing a half of B minus A. We need to expand all that. So you have minus A, we have three-fifths. Here we have A plus a half B minus a half A. So I'm really detailing everything I'm doing. So I don't need to think too much, all right? So we have minus A. Now A minus a half A is just a half A. Okay, so we have a half A, a half A plus a half B. Three-fifths times a half is three-tenths A. Then three-fifths times a half is three-tenths B. Simplify again. Minus A plus 3 tenths A is 7 tenths A plus 3 tenths B. Okay, now that's just A to P. <laughs> All right. So A to P is going to go here. Now we can find O to N. So therefore, on is A plus X lots of. So A plus X lots of all this. So we'll get 7 over 10 X A and 3 over 10 x b, okay? Um, yes, wait, that says minus a, minus a plus 3 tenths, minus plus, that's minus 7 tenths, my bad. This should say minus, minus a plus 3, that's minus 1, yeah, that should be minus, okay, cool. So, uh, what do we do next? We need to collect the like terms. So I need to see how many A's do we have and how many B's do we have. Here we need to factorize out the A. By doing that, I get 1 minus 7 tenths X A and 3 tenths X B. Okay? And this is how I knew I made a mistake over here because of if that was 1 plus 7 tenths X, what I'm going to do next wouldn't have made sense. So, O to N is this, but I also know O to N is just some multiple B. Well, if you compare the two, they both have this B term, but this has an A term, which shouldn't be there. O to N is horizontal. Why is there an A term? Well, it must mean that this bracket must be zero, okay? So, therefore, 1 minus 7 tenths X equals zero. So we got what, 10 over 7? x is 10 over 7. That's the extension. So x, it multiplies this by 10 over 7 to get to n. Okay? Now, how is that uh, helpful to us now? Because we can now work out um, o to n. All right, so we, I'll keep the question in there so we can see what we're actually trying to work out. So now we can actually work out o to n. So if this was plus, like I had before, I knew that I would have got a negative x value, which wouldn't have made sense, okay? So, therefore, O to N is what? Well, we just worked out x to be 10 over 7, which makes this 0. So we sub in 10 over 7 here, and we get what N is. So 3 over 10, so 3 over 10 times 10 over 7, B. The tens cancel we get 3 sevenths B. Very nice. So, what does that mean then? Well, if this whole vector is B, 
and this here is 3 7 B, then the other side must be 4 7 B. These two need to total B, isn't it? So therefore, the ratio, the ratio between O, N, and B is 3 7 to 4 7 So O, N to N, B is 3 7 to 4 7 which when we times both sides by 7, we get 3 to 4. And that's your answer. So, guys, what do you think? Have you seen this question before? Would you have taken another route? I think this is the best way of answering the question without doing an A-level maths, lambda mu situation, which if any of my A-level students are watching, uh, you'll know what I mean by that. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Like this video. If you learned something today, subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my GCSE courses, more details are in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own maths questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.